Hey everybody, it's Mike from Monkey Fab. Um, I wanted to make a video today on just fillers. So like a real quick, uh, down to the bare bones, what filler to use for what and why. And uh, the, the, real, the real answer is whenever you're working with material, you should probably look it up. And uh, that way you assure yourself that you uh, have the proper filler. Um, for whatever it is you're working on. But uh, I wanted to make this video uh, separately. I didn't want to include it in one of my other videos. That way if somebody was looking, you know, hey, I just want to look up filler wires, uh, filler rods, and which ones to use with which, um, then that way there's a video just for that. And you just click on that and do it. So it shouldn't take terribly long. Hopefully I won't ramble on too long. Uh, so basically these are the, this is, these are the, the general ones that you need to know about um, if you're kind of a novice welder and you're going to be, you know, weld, uh, TIG weld for the first time. Uh, the 308s is used for your 304 stainless stills. Uh, so most of the tubes, you know, since this is, I'm a car guy and I'm sure that most of my, the people who watch me are probably car people and that's probably how you got turned on uh, to this. That's kind of my mindset. That's the frame of reference from everything that I'm coming at. Uh, I don't, do anything structural and uh, you know uh, or any construction type stuff it's just all car stuff usually turbo stuff so um, 308 will be what you're using for all your stainless steel uh, that you get generally you're gonna get um, 304 uh, tubes from wherever you get it from most of the stuff's in 304 uh, that's what you want to use for that okay uh, ER 70 S2 or S6 um, you can kind of swap them out. Uh, one has a little higher silicone content. Uh, not a big deal. I usually use, it doesn't matter. You know, it honestly doesn't matter. Uh, I, I haven't noticed that big of a difference. Um, so I'll just kind of go back and forth. I think I'm using S2 right now. I could be using S6. I don't know, to be quite honest with you. They're pretty interchangeable. Um, 309 is going to be the one you use when you're joining stainless steel with mild steel. So a lot of times you'll have a... Uh, a mild steel flange and you want to weld stainless steel pipes to it, that's what you're going to use is the 309. Uh, 5356 is an aluminum filler wire. Uh, it's a pretty strong filler wire and uh, it's a good general purpose filler wire for aluminum. Aluminums can be finicky and uh, you need to you know look up what aluminum you're, you're using and, uh, and match the, the appropriate rod. Uh, for a lot of stuff we do, uh, 6061 and 5052 series aluminum, uh, the 5356 works great. It takes a little more heat to, to melt it into the joint. It generally makes a cleaner looking weld, um, less grainy and a little shinier. And that's usually what people like. So if you're making like a breather box, right, or an ice tank, that's the filler you're going to want to use. You're going to want to use 5052 uh, generally just because it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not a nilled. I, it is a nilled. It is or not. You can bend it. You can bend the shit. <laughs> so sometimes you'll get some of the uh, 6061s and it'll be T whatever rating and it's, it's, it's tempered. So you try to throw that in a break and bend it, you're going to have a heck of a time. So you'll have to nil it, uh, you know, heat it up to a certain temperature to let it cool down and uh, and then you'll be able to bend it. So just generally when you're working, that's that's just a good thing to work with is uh, 5356, and your actual aluminum should be 5052, uh, usually 1 8 inch is really, not 1 8 inch, I say 1 8 one, yeah, 1 8 inch, point, uh, one two five wall is what I like to work with. Anything smaller than that, uh, there's a little bit of weight savings. Um, it's a little finicky and a little harder to control uh, your heat input and your arc. Um, I think it's just more forgiving, is what I want to say, especially for starting out. So that's a good one to do. Forty forty three is another aluminum filler, and it's a it's a really good filler too. Uh, it's a little little softer. I, I think the tinsel shrinks a little less, and uh, but but it's a little more forgiving as well. So if you're using like a, you're, if you're welding bungs onto like a, a valve cover, you can kind of cast aluminum. Uh, that's that's a good one to use. Uh, it usually will look a little more grainy, a little hazier, not as shiny. Um, for me, anyway, when I weld it, that's what I've noticed. 
Uh, but with aluminums, again, you need to look up specifically what it is you're welding and match the filler to that. Because if they don't match, it'll crack. You'll weld it and it'll just, and you know, it's because you use the wrong stuff. Also, if there's processes going on afterwards, so say you want to build an ice box and then take it, you know, downtown and have it anodized, um, you know, one of these fillers you can't, uh, you can't do anodizing with. So, um, just stuff to keep in mind, you know, when in doubt, look it up. That's the smart, smart way to go about it. Uh, filler sizes. So um, all this stuff's general rule of thumb type type information. So uh, and I'll I'll speak from like when I was starting out and I was new. Um, I like the thinner filler wire, uh, like the O35. I used a lot. Uh, yeah, I found a dill on it. <laughs> it was like some crackhead dill, and I got like like 20 pounds of it for like 10 bucks off some crackhead eBay so I still have that <laughs> score and uh, so um, but that was good I, I like the fact that the wire melted easily and uh, it, it, when I say sticky what I mean is like if you go not into the middle of the puddle and quickly kind of get it in there and melt it and come back out um, if you kind of hit the front of the puddle it'll pull heat out of the puddle and it'll kind of like you'll feel like it sticks a little bit until you run the torch over it um, and I would notice that like on 1 16th uh, filler wires um, in both mild and stainless steel. I think that went, that was pretty, pretty much a given. Uh, so when I started out, I kind of like the thinner ones. Um, now I'm kind of switched back because I'm more comfortable with my hands and my control and, uh, and, and where I'm able to get the filler at um, that and a little more knowledge about what's going on. You just gain that. The more you do it, the more hood time you have, the more comfortable you get doing it. Uh, so I, I like 1 16th now for a lot of stuff, and I'll primarily use 1 16th for almost everything. When I weld my little stainless steel flask, I don't know if you guys have seen those or not, but it's it's pretty intricate. Um, I'll use 045 wire for that. So I'm kind of I kind of switch back and forth on you know if I want really tight ripples and stuff, I'll sometimes use 045, but I can get the same kind of look with, with 1 16th, just not pushing as much filler and dabbing a little more often. Um, so it, it's just something to keep in mind. I think that uh, the, the, the rule of thumb says like you try to match your, you want your filler wire to be maybe a little bit less than what it is you're welding. So if you got 16 gauge and it's you know, a 16th of an inch thick and you're using 1 16th inch wire, well, there's a chance that you, know, you need as much heat to, to melt the wire as you do the metal and you know if you're doing like a butt weld on tubes maybe the you know starts to, to blow away and you're not really good at getting metal in there uh, it, you know you don't have that muscle memory to, to pump in the filler and you know then it blows open and that's like I think it's like everybody's like dreaded worry when you start TIG welding or, or any kind of welding it's like that's the worst right is when you're welding like even MIG welding and the metal just and then you're like oh you know I'm falling and, and a lot of people will start in MIG welding where that's that kind of becomes like a big deal, you know. Maybe you didn't have some good fit up, and it started blowing out, and then the metal and the metal's hot and blowing out, and uh, and and now you're playing a game of you know how do I? And you don't want to do that with your stainless because the whole re I'm sorry with your TIG welding because the whole reason you're doing TIG welding is because you want it to look nice. Um, but you can the cool thing about TIG welding is it's so controllable. You know, you can control your amps, you control your speed, you control the heat input, you control how much wire goes into it. it, it it's really, I, I personally feel that it's a lot easier than MIG welding, um, but then I don't pick up a MIG gun that often. And, uh, and the stuff I MIG weld tends to be pretty thin, and that, that's not necessarily, a, 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 it's not an easy combination to master. So with TIG welding, um, Try to try to match your go maybe one one under. So if you're one 16 gauge tubes, maybe try a 045 wire. That start that works pretty good um, when you're starting out. Um, for aluminum, it's it's like one sixteenth and three thirty seconds. And generally, what I'll do is when I'm all my joints that I weld, I'll use one sixteenth. Um, and then if I'm doing bungs, usually the bung will have like a, a you know. A, there's a name for it, but I can't think of it right now. But the the base of it, and uh, you'll have to run a fillet weld around that base, and you want it to stick up. And it'll just require more filler. So the easiest way to do that is use a, a, a thicker rod. Um, but the same thing goes. You can use a thicker rod and just add less, and you know get the same profile. Um, it doesn't. It 
I don't think that I don't feel like it makes as much of a difference with aluminum because the aluminum just wets in a lot better, and uh, it, it the puddle's so much wider, it's so much easier to hit your mark that uh, it's not as of a concern as your stills, where your stills are a little less seem to be a little less forgiving at first until you kind of you know get the muscle memory developed. So uh, that's generally what I recommend is 045 and a 1 16th of of 308 and 70s2 and I just like just have some 309 because you never know when you're gonna have to weld like uh, it's also good for cast iron um, but cast iron is just a bitch anyway it's you know I weld the cast iron where I did everything right and you know and the, the, the machinist guy comes back you know uh, uh, 10 minutes later it cracked and you know it just did what it did rewelded it and seemed to do fine or maybe he just hid it away from me I don't know <laughs> we'll find a competent welder maybe he was thinking in his mind uh, and then one, uh, 1 16th and 3 30 seconds of uh, 53 56 I think is good to have and maybe just like one maybe if I had to pick one of the 40 40 uh, 40 43 I'd get the 3 30 seconds just maybe a pound of that have it on hand and uh, then you got there if you need it there's just a ton, like I sell this stuff and I have the, the price list that I get from Blue Demon and it's it's amazing how many different filler materials there are out there and uh, it makes you realize like how ignorant you are of, of, you know, welding when you just, you know, it's like, man, I've never even heard of this stuff. So, uh, but for everything, if you're a car guy, this is going to cover, that's going to cover probably almost 100% of what you're doing. The last thing I, I, I want to say about about the filler wire is that it takes practice and you really need to develop that muscle memory of that, that hand control of feeding wire and you know buy one and just sit there and run it through your hand. What happens I, uh, is, is that your brain for new, new motions, new actions, you're, you actually use one side of your brain and then once it becomes uh, a memory it, it, it moves it over so that's kind of where it's like it's such a struggle to feed wire at first but then after you do it you know uh, for a while it does you don't even think about it it's because it's a whole you know uh, thing in your brain that is taking control it's, it's truly muscle memory and it, I, I always tell people it's like this it's like remember when you were a kid in school and you sat down you know like I don't even know like elementary school and you sat down and they said write your ABCs for the first time and you were just like you know, like maybe that, that capital A was okay because that was all straight lines, but that E, you know, he had compound curves and reducing radiuses and all this stuff. And it was tough, right? And you had to fit it in between those, those big old lines that they had with the dot line in the middle and have it just line up perfectly. And, uh, but now you do it, you know, you write every day and you don't even give it a second thought. And uh, that's what happens with, when you're tick welding is those, those actions go into your brain. So it's, it's, uh, so once you understand the physiology of it, I think that it, it, it helps it helps you because you, you realize that like, hey, I just have to put my hours in. Like anything you do in life, it's like I have to put my hours in to get this, you know, developed so that it becomes instinctual and, and I can do it. So the biggest thing I, I see a lot of times is people will beat themselves up, you know, like I just, I can't get it. Well, you know, if you don't want to get it, you won't. But uh, if you want to get it and you stay with the practice, you're going to do it. So um, that's my little pep talk to you guys. I hope you appreciated it. Um, I hope the filler wire thing will help you out. You can buy all these except the 043 for now. I'll probably add that to the website because it's a pretty good filler to have. But you can buy all those on monkeyfabgarage.com if you want to go there and check it out. I'd appreciate you guys' support. And I think the next video will be running beads and using filler wire. I'm not sure. I think I'll have my wife do that again. I think that last video turned out pretty well. And it's good to see, like, she's still a novice. You know, she has really good hat. She's like an artist. And I tend to think artists are better at this. They're more, uh, they, they lend themselves, they're, they're, you know, whatever it is that makes a person an artist, they're, they're lent into that easier so if you're if you're like me and you weld like a mechanic you know you can still weld you can do it man uh, you know it might not ever be that top peak level stuff you know I always look at those super superstars and, and I'm in awe because I just know I know that I'll probably never have that but it won't keep me from trying um, so we'll do that and we'll run some beads and uh, and that's what you got to do you got to get that hood time you got to move that from, the, from the, the left side of your brain to the right side of your brain or whichever it is um, and get there, you gotta get there. And you're gonna get there. I have faith in you.
Anyway, this is Mike from Monkey Fab. I hope this video is quick. I'm sorry for rambling too long. Um, I'm passionate. I'm passionate about this stuff. And I want you guys to be too. So, uh, it's Mike from Monkey Fab. Thanks for tuning in. And this is Mike out.